Hello United Backyard Cutters and other sword enthusiasts. I've just received this uh, Akio Hattori model 2208 from Dark Sword Armory and uh, I'm going to do a bit of a review on it for you. First off, um, first impressions. Packaging, uh, it had a nice heavy brown wrapper over large cell bubble wrap around a cardboard box that was uh, had some packing in it, some uh, styrofoam packing, and then it contained this box inside. Quite adequate packing, I believe, for shipping. So, I took some pictures of the packaging, and here they are now. Now, the only previous experience I've had with Dark Sword Armory is uh, a couple years ago I purchased this Black Knight sword. It's uh, from Dark Sword Armory, but I bought it second hand. These are forged in Quebec, Canada. They don't come from some secondary forge in, in China or something like that. These are actually made by Dark Sword Armory, hand forged. And uh, if you go on the Sword Buyer's Guide or any of those sites and see the reviews on this, uh, highly favorable. They're a, a brutal sword. They take a beating. They're very well made. As much as I like this, I was very excited to uh, get one of the Akio Hattori katanas from them and, and see what that stood up to as well. So let's go see. As you can see inside the box we have sword and a beautiful gold tassel sword bag, a cleaning kit. We have a three-piece one tier sword stand and there you have the Akio Hattori model 2208 uh, first impression of the sword when I pulled it out is yeah I like it um, it's quite aesthetically pleasing I really like this uh, bamboo or, or rattan wrapping around the saya the uh, ito is not cotton um, it could be real silk. Whatever it is, it's good quality. It's wrapped very tightly. Um, the twists alternate. Overall, I think it's done quite well. As you can see, the uh, it's quite evenly wrapped. I like I like the uh, the little gold shitadome trim. Um, they are metal. I've seen. I've seen plastic ones. The uh, Sageo is a nice thick braided uh, black, I guess it's a, a silk or it could be, could be a synthetic, but it, like I said, the Ito looks silk. Ray skin is real. Um, I don't really see any nodes, but uh, it looks uh, fairly big panels on there. Another thing I noticed right away is the evenness of this nice sepa on both sides. I've picked up swords before that the sepa is like a cheap stamped out brass sepa that's you know it's offset from the handle and, and uh, stands like a, like a sore thumb. This one really uh, I'm really impressed with the fit and quality of that together with the suba on here. Um, it has a, a nice little design and some highlighted color to it. It's a little different, kind of nice. I don't know how well you can see it on there, but... This blade is 1095 high carbon steel, which is a little bit more, a little better quality than a lot of blades. I've, I've got um, 1060 blades, 1070 blades, uh, a lot of different things. This is uh, through tempered 1095 steel. Um, and this blade does not have a bohi. So it has a little bit more weight and being that high quality of steel, I think this thing is going to cut heavy stuff like a laser. Uh, we'll find out soon enough. So there's a look at our through hardened 1095 steel blade on this Akio Hattori 2208 katana from Dark Sword Armory. Next thing I'm going to do, pop these makugi and we'll have a look at uh, 
how well it's put together. So far, so good. Sawmay panels are uh, inlaid into the wood, which is a nice sign. Um, the ones that aren't inlaid, you'll see a a real a ridge along the ito where where it overlaps. But when they groove it right in like that, then it makes a nice smooth surface for it. Uh, the Nakago goes quite a distance down the handle. That's always good to see. So far I'm pretty happy with what I see. I don't see any problems with this. The, uh, the wood of the handle is quite solid. There's no cracks. The Sepa and Suba are quite snugly on there. I'm not going to force them off. I'm sure if we put a little piece of wood on the back of there and gave it a tap or two it would come loose but at this point I don't see the need for dis disassembling it any further than it is now it gives us a pretty good look at it and uh, the Makugi are in good shape so we're gonna put this back together And we're back to it being good and solid. So we're pretty happy with the quality of this. Uh, very well made, very solid. I like it a lot. We're going to go outside. We're going to try some cutting with it, see how it performs. Going to start off with some light cutting on some economy mats, and then we'll try it on some traditional tatame. See how it works. Let's do it. Apparently I had some camera issues while I was cutting the tatami. <laughs> Unfortunately I don't have it on film. But as you can see it cut through rather cleanly. I'm not going to bother trying to soak um, another mat to, to get that on film. I'll just go with the, uh, the footage I have from the beach and leave it at that for now. Okay, now that the cutting is over like to make some observations about this sword. Uh, being as well made as it is and as beefy as it is, um, high quality steel, in my opinion this would have no problem on pretty much any grade of, of cutting. Um, heavy targets, uh, multiple mats, 
My tatami mat I was cutting out there was extremely dry. I didn't have the opportunity to soak it as long as I wanted. It cut through that pretty easily. Um, I'm sure that double or triple mats it would have no problem cutting through. It's, it's a very beefy blade. It, it feels very solid in your hands. After cutting, um, really no scuffing in the blade. That's, that's another good point about very high quality steel like 1095 is uh, it doesn't mark up very easily. So I've given this just a quick rub down with powder and re-oiled it. Uh, the edge stayed true. Uh, there's no rolling or chipping or anything like that, which is to be expected in a quality blade like this. One thing I find very interesting. Dark Sword Armory offers three levels of these Akio Hattori katanas. There's a standard level, or I guess it would be the economy level, uh, a mid-range level, and then an elite level. I might point out too that although this is through hardened 1095 steel, if I read right on the Dark Sword Armory website, these can also be ordered um, traditionally clay tempered, um, which I'd like to see that too. Um, now this model, the 2208, is actually from their standard line, the economy line if you will. Um, which the price reflects. I mean, it's under $200. However, the sword does not reflect that. Um, I truly think, uh, in all honesty, that I would expect this kind of quality from at least a mid-range line of swords from them. So, uh, like I say, that's it's a real bonus to have a, a, a sword in that price range that is this well made and, and is uh, absolutely no problem being a good heavy cutter.